Amen. Before we pray, before you go home tonight, make sure you've gone home with your, your lesson entitled Death and a Soul, together with another one which is entitled Is Obedience Legalism. Our future topics tomorrow is the long awaited day, the Antichrist Power and 666 Part 2. So tomorrow you'll be going home knowing who is the Antichrist. Let's believe and pray. Our dear loving Father, what in heaven, we come before your presence in a special way. We wish to humble ourselves before you. We wish to plead with you that Jesus, take care of us, bless us, and tonight may you speak to our hearts again. May we have a reason why we can talk to you. May we have a reason why, Lord, we can live out, out of this place having a better hope and having closed all the doors of the enemy and allowed Jesus to be the greatest door towards eternal life. Forgive our sins and purify our hearts. Empower us in a strong way that, Lord, we may experience the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. For we pray, trusting and believing in Jesus' name. Amen. Tonight, friends, we are going to not to study about the devil's door. Knock, knock, knock. Today we want to discover whether we have always or, or whether we have ever opened the devil's door. Somebody will ask me, what is this about? You say, friends, in our country, this uh, year, as it began, there are things that came up that were so much distressing. You come across the East African website magazine, and they say that Kenyan cult leader Mackenzie freely preached dangerous teachings. We have one man called Paul Mackenzie back in our country, and this man came up with a teaching. He's a man who has been having followers for, an, for, for a period of time now, but he reached to a time whereby he started giving teachings to his followers, teachings what, that were not right. He told people that they only need to starve, and after they starve, they will go and meet to their Lord Jesus Christ. Before I continue, I just want to give you the clip that you may realize or listen to exactly what was happening in that period of time. They believed they would meet God. They ended up in a shallow grave outside a coastal town in eastern Kenya, victims of a suspected cult leader. Abbas Ade's wife, son and parents-in-law disappeared, leaving everything behind. So when I get such a... I doubt whether it's audible enough. Okay, let me try again. They believed they would meet God. They ended up in a shallow grave outside a coastal town in eastern Kenya, victims of a suspected cult leader. Abbas Ade's wife, son and parents-in-law disappeared, leaving everything behind. Now this is a story of people who disappeared from their homes. People left the things they had. People left the riches they had and they disappeared all of a sudden. And they followed one of a religious leader. And let's continue to listen what really happened to them. I get such a phone. I said someone, I told them they are going to see Jesus. So then I tracked a flight. It's only book a one-way ticket to Malindi, which she should have a return ticket back to Nairobi. Now, these are people who believe that they are supposed to go and see Jesus. So they were supposed to come from wherever places they were, and they were to travel in a, in a place in the coastal region of Kenya so that there is where they will meet Jesus. When they were going, they were told, you take a, 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 dual, a dual ticket to and fro. This is the man accused of luring them to Malindi. Paul McKenzie and Thenge is the leader of the Good News International Church. He apparently promised his followers they would meet their creator if they starved themselves to death. So this person has promised his followers that if they starve themselves to death, then they will meet Jesus. In this area, he had been arrested before. Uh, when two children died, there wasn't enough information, enough evidence to, you know, uh, uh, keep him behind bars. That's what the court said. So, yes, people are angry, but, uh, you know, this has gone this far. Police believe dozens of victims may be buried in the forest. 
Several children are among the dead, and there are fears many more could be missing. We visited homes in villages in the area, and we spoke to parents whose children had all died. Some families have lost up to five children, and in some cases the parents have died as well. Some members of the church were rescued from the preacher's property, alive but weak. Relatives at the exhumation site are holding out hope that their missing loved ones have survived. So disheartening and very... Now, just to pause, what is happening here? This is a religious man. This is a person who is believed to be used by God. He is a humble or he is a follower of our Lord Jesus Christ. But then he has led thousands of people to have a belief that is not founded on the scriptures. And what is so much amazing, it is believed that it is expected that hundreds and hundreds of people have died and have been buried without knowledge. When the government came to the knowledge of this, they almost found 300 bodies that were already buried of people who believed that they would starve themselves and make Jesus, but then they went to a place where they died there forever long. You see, friends, we are living in a world whereby there is something called cults. You see, friends, it was far also in the United States of America. In March 22nd and March 23 in the year 1997, that there were also a member of a certain religious group, of a certain cult group, that 39 people decided to commit suicide. They decided to have one of what was identified as one of the largest American mass suicide. These people believed that death was not an enemy. They believed that death was a friend. They they believed that they would go on a higher level of existence when they die. They believed that as long as they were alive, they had still not made an achievement. So that when they die, then life had just begun. In other words, they would be much, much better when they die. Actually, one of the people who was called J. Gordon Melton, who was an editor of the Authoritative Encyclopedia of American Religions, had this to say concerning concerning this cult group. He said, in this case, they had a positive motive, a great place to go, he says, so they had, why hang around here? So these people, they were struggling, or they were in a place whereby they believed being in this country, being, being on this planet Earth is a waste of time. There is somewhere better. They had a better motive, a good place to go, and they were wondering why should we continue hanging around this place. Then another person called James Tabor, who was a cult expert at the University of North Carolina, had this to say. This group is completely different. These people rather calmly followed suicide as their exit in a very positive way to a higher level of existence. In other words, this group of people, they believe that death is a good thing. Death is an entering wage. Death is a door that leads you to a higher level of existence. Actually, he continues to say, they define death not as the enemy of life, but as life itself. Therefore, there are people in this world who define death as life itself. It is not an enemy. It is actually a friend. But you see, friends, when you study the Bible, you realize that the Bible has something else to say about death. You realize that death is not something that leads us just to another level. You realize that death, according to God's word, is an enemy. When you read the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verses number 26, the Bible is very clear that the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. So when you take God's word, the Bible teaches us that death is an enemy. But there are religious men in this world who teach that death is a friend. Actually, concerning this man who is an editor, or who is a cult expert says that these people they define death as a, as the enemy of life itself. So this cult group was called the Heaven's Gate. They believe that for you to go to heaven, then death was the key. It was a friend. It was the one that was ushering us into life itself. But the biggest question is why did these people commit suicide? Why did 39 people 
decide to kill themselves. Why? Do cult leaders tell their members to starve themselves to death so that they can meet Jesus? You see, friends, instead of this being a heaven's gate, it turned to be a devil's door. In other words, they open a door to the enemy. You see, friends, what is this devil's door? When we are talking about devil's door, what do we truly mean? You see, friends, virtually, cults have opened this door. If, the, if When you go to the world today, most of religions have opened this door. Some Christians have also opened these doors, and we wonder what exactly is the devil's door. And before we open and we realize what the devil's door is, I have to first identify, or I have to take you through what we call a cult. You see, most of the time when you hear about cults, you wonder, what really is this thing called a cult? You say, friends, here is another group. It's a group of people that were being led by one a religious man called James Jones. James Jones was one of the people also who led most of the Americans to commit mass suicide. We are told that over 900 people died in a mass suicide because they followed a religious man. This was a religious man who first began with the Bible. He started really leading people and teaching them God's word. But slowly by slowly, he decided or he tried, he decided to pull back God's word and started leading people to what God had shown him. Eventually, he told them that the Lord has shown him that they should take poison and they should die. And that is why today it is important in this world to identify what is a cult. When you come to Christians, we are told from the Christian perspective, a cult is any group that does not accept Christ as Lord and Savior and the Bible as the foundation of the faith. So concerning, according to Christianity, when somebody or when a religion does not accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, of their life, when they do not take the Bible as the only leader and guide of faith, then it is identified as a cult. But the biggest question today, when you look at the Bible, when you open the sacred scriptures, how do you identify a cult? Today I want to give you four steps, or the four ways, or four identifying marks of identifying a cult. The first one today is that a cult follows a human leader rather than following Jesus. For for instance, when you talk about the Heaven's Gate cult, this was a group of people who was who were a good examples of the cult. And today we are going to take the Heaven's Gate as one of the examples of the cults of the world. We say, friends, they were following a man who was called Marshall Apple White. He was once a former choir director. He was a good man. He could sing so well. And because of that, he gained popularity. And you see, friends, as a result of that, people began began being his followers. They started following him and his teachings. And you see, friends, it is not safe in this world to follow a human being. We are living in a, in a time in this world where people have set human beings as their arm. You see, friends, when you go to the Bible, in the book of John chapter 14, verses number 6, the Bible is very clear. Jesus speaks to us and he tells us, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the way and the life. No man comes unto the Father, but from me. In other words, Jesus is the only way for Christianity. It is very bad. It is very wrong. It is not safe. It is dangerous to follow a human being. If you are looking for a pathway to salvation, then you would rather follow the pathway of Jesus, because Jesus is the only right path you can follow and be safe and be secure. But when you take a human being to be your guide, to be your follower, to be the person you trust on this planet earth, then you are trending on dangerous grounds. You see, friends, you are living in a point in time in this world where people today have made men their most, their source of defense. When you go to the book of Jeremiah, chapter number 17, the Bible is very clear that it tells us that it is a curse. Curse be the man who puts another man as his own guide or as his own arm and defense. Read with me, Jeremiah chapter 17, verse number 5. If you are not there, then we will pass. So the Bible, friends, is very clear that if you are truly a true Christian, then Jesus is supposed to be your guide. The Bible identifies 
Christ Jesus as a good shepherd. We are the sheep. And in those days, when the sheep was supposed to be moving out, the shepherd was in front, and the sheep were constantly following the shepherd. Every time we're on this planet Earth, the only person who is rightful to be followed is Jesus. The Bible is very clear, friends. In the book of 2 Peter chapter 1, verses number 22, the Bible says that Jesus is our is our example. When you go to the book of 1 John chapter 2, verses number 6, the Bible says we are supposed to walk just as Jesus walked. It is only safe to follow Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life. But you see, we are living in a point in time where even Christians have made men to be their source of strength. Whenever you realize somebody is supposed to follow what God says, the person says, let me go first and meet my pastor. Let me go first and meet so and so. Let me first go and meet the prophet of the Lord. Today people have made human beings to be their sole, sole trustworthy people. And they have forgotten Jesus Christ. You see, friends, cults follow a human leader rather than they follow Jesus. It is very dangerous for people in these last days to make men the ones they follow. It is only safe to follow Jesus. The Bible says, thus says the Lord, cast be the man the trust in man. And therefore if you want to be saved, then follow Jesus. The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah chapter 17, verses number 9, blessed is the man who makes God where he is trust and his arm, who trusts upon the Lord. And therefore friends, today we identify one of the key uh, identifying marks of a cult is that a cult follows a human leader rather than following Jesus. Point number two concerning cults, cults follow human teachings rather than the Bible. They do not follow what the Bible says, they follow tradition, they follow what the people say, they follow the people whom they have trusted, what they say, that is exactly what they follow. But when you follow, when you talk about Jesus, Jesus says, when you are trusting in the Lord, when you are putting your trust upon the, the one who made the heavens and the earth, then the only thing that you are able to trust is God's word. When you go to the book of John chapter 17, verses number 17, the Bible is very clear. Jesus is, is praying for his disciples and is asking God to make his people holy. He's saying, sanctify them, O Lord, but you sanctify them with the truth, for your word is truth. In other words, according to Jesus, it is only God's word that we are supposed to follow. When you go to the book of Psalms, 119 verses 104, the Bible is very clear and it says, Thy word, O Lord, is a lamp upon my feet, and it's a light on my path. In other words, it is the Bible that is very clear and that is supposed to lead God's people. That is why, friends, it is not safe to follow human teachings. It is only safe to follow God's word. When you go to the book of Mark, which book? When you go to the book of Mark, chapter number 7, verses number 7, the Bible is very clear. Jesus has a problem. Let's begin with verses number 6. It says, you just sit down so that we can be quick. Let's go. He answered and said unto them. Jesus answered and said unto them. Well, have he says, prophesies of you hypocrites, as it is written. As it is written, these people honoreth me with their lips. These people honoreth me with their lips. But their heart is far away from me. Their heart is far away from me. Continue quickly, brother, please. How be it in vain to do thy worship? To do they watch me? Uh, let me read this book. Thank you. <laughs> the Bible is very clear and it says, for, uh, verse number 8, For laying aside the commandments of God, you hold the traditions of men, as the washing of pots and cups, and many other such like things. Verse number 9, And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandments of God, and that you may be able to keep your own traditions. The Bible is very clear that when you leave the commandments of God, when you leave the teachings of Jesus, when you leave the way the Lord is leading us, and we start following the sayings and the teachings and the prophesying of people, then we are in dangerous grounds. We are living at a time when people say, so and so said this, the wise men said this, we are told by this philosopher this, people have forgotten God's word. They have taken the human teachings, they have taken the traditions of councils, they have taken the creeds of people to be the reason why they are Christians.
Christians. But you see, friends, you have to be aware because cults have a problem where they follow human teachings instead of following the Bible. So you see, friends, for instance, when you're talking about this cult that was called the Heaven's Gate, I want you to notice that there were some chairs that were down there, but on top of that table, you realize there were two chairs. The chairs that were down there were 39. There were chairs of those people who committed suicide. But then in those two chairs, this man marshaled up and wide. He started teaching his people that the, there was her wife who had died and she would come. She would talk to her. She would tell her what to tell his people. And that, what, that chair that is on top of the table, it was a preserved chair for the ghost of the wife. And people believed that surely there was a ghost of the wife that would sit there. She's the one that could communicate and bring information to them. She was the one that was giving them guidance. And because of that, they tried, they trusted this man and they forsook God's, God's word. You see, friends, it is not safe at all to follow human teachings. It is only safe when you follow God's word. You see, friends, wherever you are, anytime you go to church, anytime you go to a religious gathering, you are only safe when it is the word of God that you hear. It is the word of God that you handle. It is the word of God that you keep. And therefore, friends, to be aware of cults, you must avoid following human teachings in the places of the Bible. Point number three, friends. How again do you identify a cult? You see, friends, a cult urges group conformity. You see, <laughs> the Bible is very clear. It says, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. God is a God of freedom. God is a God who has given people liberality. You choose what you want. If you want to choose God, it is okay. If you want to choose uh, the devil, it's okay. If you want to do the, the right thing, it is okay. If you want to do the wrong thing, it is okay. That is where the Spirit of the Lord is. I have had people who have followed human beings human beings have put uh, things that are mandatory. They tell you, if you cannot do this, you are not part of us. <laughs> this is the only way. This is the way of dressing. This is the only way of eating. This is the only way of doing this. This is the only way of doing that. You see, friends, a cult is something that I just group conformity. For instance, when you look at this group called the Heaven's Guild Cult, for them, if you look at them, those were some of their fishes. But if you are so close to this picture, you will hardly identify who is a man and who is a woman. They all look the same. They all did the same thing. They all dress the same way. You see, friends, we have Christians in this world who just want to follow... <laughs> They are following one thing, number one, is not God's teaching, but then they have conformed to one standard. They say, you see what? For us, in our church, all of us, that's the way we do things. <coughs> and you see, you tell them, brother, God's word says this. They tell you, no, no, no. For us, for us, it's not God's word. The man of God says, this is the way to go. <laughs> For us, you see what? <laughs> for us, for us, let me go and ask us. They want to do things in a conformity manner. But you see, friends, it is very dangerous. For example, the group that I told you that followed this preacher called Mackenzie. The people were told, for us, we have to fast everybody. <laughs> we have to make sure nobody is eating. And when you eat, they will punish you. There are movements, friends, you have to be careful. If punishment is as a result of not following what it, the teaching is all about, you must be careful. Because cards, they urge group conformity. And people say today, everyone else is doing it, so it must be right. There are people today who have made truth to be democratic. So that as long as everybody does that same thing, then it is fine. It is okay.
Okay, friends, let me let, let, read with me the book of Exodus chapter 23. Verses number 2, it is very clear. The Bible is says, please do not follow a multitude to do evil. There are people today who say, because majority of the people do this, then it must be the right thing to be done. Because most of the people in Uganda, they say this way, then that is the truth. But you see, friends, it is dangerous. Wherever you are following a group, especially to do evil, you are, you, you, you are in dangerous grounds. You can never follow a crowd to go against God's will. It is better and far much better to stand alone doing the right thing than standing with a group and a crowd that is turning you to hell. See, friends, Jesus was very clear. He said and he told his people, you'd rather go to heaven without your hands and your eye and your feet than to take the whole body to hell. So cards, they urge what is called group conformity. The other way of urging group, group conformity comes by peer pressure. One of the reasons why parents fear for their children when they go to the institutions of learning, they know that when the children go there, they, are, they might be tempted to follow a certain group that is not right. But they follow it because of peer pressure. Everybody is doing it, let me also do it. You see, friends, it is bad and dangerous to follow a group. I remember when I was in campus in the year 2014. <laughs> Some of the students would come they were very innocent very innocent you know they come if she's a lady she comes with that dress that looks like a tent you know it she greets you and she bows down like the ugandas do they near you speak one word that is that is that does not look moral, she shies off. Very innocent. But all of a sudden she starts realizing if he's a gentleman that in campus there is a method of walking. You know, she used to come walking this way. <laughs> now she realizes you put one hand here. And then you go as though one leg is, is broken. <laughs> And she re somebody realized, hey, our parents used to put their, their trousers here. Now he realizes, hey, hey, people don't do it here, that way here. They realize that there is a way, the, the, the trouser goes a little bit down. Then he realizes there's a way, every button of the shirt is not closed. There's one that should be opened. Then all of a sudden he realizes, ah, me have been using that oil that looks like fat. People do tss, 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 tss. And so, all of a bit by bit, the person starts conforming. He starts following the peers, starts following what other people do. do. Eventually, some of these times, or as, as a result of that, you can find yourself getting into something that is not godly. The Bible is very clear, friends, that we should be able to avoid what's called peer pressure. In the Bible, there was a son of one of the kings. And when the father died, this brother was supposed to be the next king, but he, he wanted to do things differently. So he went to the old man. And the old man, they told him, brother, do not oppress God's people like your father did. The man seemed a bit convinced. But then he said, let me wait. Let me go and, and speak to my peers. He went to his young men, people of his age, and then the people told him, brother, you must show your muscle. You must show your power. You must exert more pressure than your father. And this person did completely against God's will. It's because of peer pressure. There are people today who do things as a result of peer. You see, friends, when we go up to heaven, there will be people who will be in heaven because of their peers. Amen? But there are also very many people who will be in hell simply because of their own peers. Do you know how many people are in prison today because a peer or a friend just told them today, let's go to the bar? <laughs> Do you 
you know how many people are in their graves because a friend just told you, brother, today, just today? I have a friend of mine back in the country. And this friend of mine one day decided to test and try whether he can steal things. That very night, he was killed. Do you know how many people, by following peer group, eventually, as a result of their friends, they will either have been in heaven or be in hell? Be careful with the peers. So many people have been taken to groups, groups that are not easily to come out because of peer pressure. Say, friends, the Bible is very clear about that. Point number three, mind control. Culture, our cults, they control the mind. You are not given room to think. You are not given room to meditate. You are not given room to, to try and figure out whether this thing is true or not true. It is a set way. You must go through that way. Whenever you are in a group, that is a, like a mind control. Be careful. The Bible is very clear in the book of Isaiah chapter number 1, verses number 18. Come now, let us reason together. Christianity is about reasoning. God says, come unto me, ye that labor, and I will give you rest. Jesus wants us to come, but he wants us to have a religion. A religion that you can think about it. A religion that is not a must. It's something that you choose. It is something that you have a cognitive mind. But whenever you are in a place where you do things and you don't even know why you are doing those things, it is dangerous. You must be careful because cults, they control the mind. You see, friends, in the Bible we have an example of group conformity. Find that in the book of Daniel, chapter number 3. Nebuchadnezzar decided to set a statue. And then he forced the people to bow down and to worship that statue. And when he did that, Majority of the people decided to bow because everybody was bowing down, including the Jews, who knew it was evil. It is not the right thing to do. They bowed down to worship that, that golden statue. But there were three young men whom I love. They were so powerful. They were so bold. They knew that it is sinful to follow a multitude to do evil. It is wrong to follow a crowd, to conform to a crowd when that is not what God says. And they say, O oh, king, we are not careful to answer you concerning this. Whether our God will help us or he will not help us. But we are not going. We are not going to try because that's not God's way. God is looking for people who will stand. God is looking for people who will only follow the way of the Lord. They will not do things because majority of the people do it. They will do things because it's the right thing to do. Cults are dangerous. The Bible says in Proverbs 16:25, there is a way that seems right unto her, but the end thereof are the ways of death. So friends, be careful. Don't do things. Don't follow paths because people are following it. I have met so many people who are atheists. Some of them, they are atheists simply because they just liked how atheists look like. They just enjoy how they negotiate, how they, how, how they debate. And all of a sudden, he makes the first step, and then another step, and then another step, and eventually, he ends up denying the existence of God. Not because he has any reason, but because he is carried up by the peers. I feel so bad. I have a cousin. Let me leave that because I'm on air. <laughs> you see, friends, the Bible is clear. You see, friends, even in Gunoah's time, there are people who help Noah to construct that ark. Every day, they were there with a nail and a hammer. They would pick the timber and they would tell Noah, let's construct this thing. They were convicted that this is the way. Surely this world is going to be destroyed. That was clear to them. But then, when the time of getting into the ark reached, they started looking around. Who else is going in? <laughs> Who else is going with me? 
And then he starts realizing that people are not going in. They start doubting their ways. They start doubting the leadings of the Lord. And eventually they say, no, Noah, you get in first. Let us go and confirm what other people are saying. They were left out. Noah got in with his family. And that day when the flood came, they were lost. You see, friends, it is dangerous to follow a crowd to do that thing which is evil. But then, let me ask another question. Was Noah a cult leader? Simply because he told people things that were not common to them? You see, friends, it is not cultish to follow God's word. Amen? It is not cultish to do as thus says the Lord. You see, friends, if God says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, if you follow that, you are followed not because every other person is not following it. You are following it because God has said that. But if people say you've joined a cult, it's okay. Because it is not cultish to follow what God says. It is cultish to follow what human beings say and to reject what God says. You so see, when God says... This is what you're supposed to eat. And this is what you're not supposed to eat. It is not cultish to do it. Other men may make you feel uncomfortable. They may make you feel as though you are out of the plan. But God's word, once followed, it is okay. Noah was there. He was calling people. And it seems that this man was out of his mind. He's Get into the ark. Get into the ark. No one is going in. And no one is left there. And is wondering, what should I do? Have you ever been in a place where there is a, 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 an appeal made and it's like you are the only one who has come in front? You look around and say, eh, am I the only one who has received this gospel? <laughs> am I out of my mind? Should I not have made this decision? It is not cultish to stand alone. It is better to be alone because when you are alone with Jesus, that is the majority. But when you are many without Jesus, friends, you are not in God's line. Matthew chapter 7, verses number 13 is very clear. There is, not, there is a path that looks so great, so big, it is so wide, but many pass through it, but it is going through destruction. But there is a, there is a path, there is a way that seems narrow. Few go through it, but it's going through eternal life. Amen? You can ever know, you can ever be sure that following God's word is not cultish. It is actually being godly. That is why, friends, Noah was not a cultish leader. When he decided to choose God's word, it becomes something that is clear. It is not cultish to obey God. But you see, friends, suppose you are during the time of Noah. Which way would it be safer? Following the crowd or following eight people? <laughs> eh? Following eight or following the crowd? Suppose you follow the crowd, what would happen to you? You would perish. You see, friends, it is never safe to do something because the majority of the people in this world are doing it. Amen? So, friends, group conformity is not godly. So cults urge group conformity. Point number four. Cults are deceived on the state of man in death. Do you know what cults, is? cults speak about death? They say there is no death. <laughs> when we hear somebody telling you there is no death, there is something wrong with you. Because every day we see people die. So when you come across somebody who tells you there is nothing like death, then you must be careful. Point number two, can't say man is God. They say you don't have to trust in any other being. Out here there is nothing called God. <laughs> they say that in you there is a God. They come up, you see, cults. Beginning with Evishim, which is one of the biggest cult I know. Which began 
in Egypt when Pharaoh was asking Moses, what did you say, which God? And then it came all along all through from Egypt to Babylon. Then it came from Babylon to Medepasia, then to Greece, and then it came to Rome. Then during the Roman Empire, things were not working out. There was something called the French Revolution. And atheism was built where they, they, they brought up this goddess of reason. And this goddess of reason, the, the, the key theme of atheism was, do what thou wilt. In other words, let nobody tell you anything. You determine what is good and what is wrong. And they say, you see, God, there is nothing called God. God is in you. You are God. There are people who believe even in trees there is God. God is everywhere. Of course, the Bible has its own way of explaining that. But it is cultish to believe that man is God. Point number three, the knowledge of self is salvation. Nowadays, that is the gospel being preached. You, you find out yourself. <laughs> Have you ever heard such things? You, you, you find out, when you find yourself, when you find yourself, life begins. <laughs> you see, friends, the Bible is very clear in Colossians chapter 2, verses number 10, that we are complete in Christ. Outside Christ, friends, we are lost. Outside Christ, we are heading to hell. Outside Christ, there is no salvation. The Bible says in Acts chapter 4, verses number 12, there is no other name under heaven upon which we can be saved except Jesus. And you see, friends, it is cultish to believe that when you know yourself, then you've received salvation. And skulls are deceived on the state of man in death. You see, friends, the fourth characteristics identifies to us exactly what the devil's door is. Let's get back to this statement that was given to us by James Tower. This group is completely different. These people rather calmly follow suicide as their exit in a very positive way to a higher level of existence. They believe when a person dies, he goes into a higher level of existence. He becomes much more better. And that is why when people die, you hear somebody says, my grandfather came to me back in the night and told me exactly how the exam will be. He showed me every answer. If your grandfather was alive, would he even understand what, what pharmacology is? <laughs> <laughs> but somebody says, you see what? My father, my grandfather has shown me everything in the exam. They believe when somebody dies, he goes into a higher level of existence. People believe that people who have died, they are able to tell you things to come. But when they are alive, you cannot even tell me what will happen in the next 10 minutes. But when you die, you know everything. So friends, when you die, they believe you don't really die. There is part of you that really lives on. It continues moving. It continuously getting to exist. And you say, friends, that is very dangerous. They believe that the only difference when a person dies is destination. They believe that when you die, your soul soars off into the cosmos. And most Christians may believe that when they die, if you are a good person, your soul also soars off to heaven. Let me repeat it again. Yesterday I mentioned it. Let me again stir up your imagination. When people say, may you rest his soul in eternal peace, where is that eternal peace where the soul is resting? It's because there is a belief that when a person dies, there is somewhere the soul is slightly and quickly rising up to. But you see, friends, this is exactly what is the devil's door. So, as I answer that question, what the devil's door is, are the dead really dead? That is our question. For me to answer this, allow me to take you through a clip. <laughs> this is a very funny clip. But you can just listen to it and then we we'll continue with our study. A 
along the busy Kisumu Kericho Highway. Young and old scramble to get a glimpse of what brought business to stand still in this small center in Kochogo, Ahero, Kisumu County. A coffin by the roadside bearing the remains of a man destined for rest in Butere, Kakameg County. But the send-off ended here. When the unexpected happened abruptly, halting a journey that started in Nairobi Friday night. Now, this is very funny. <laughs> they were moving from Nairobi to wherever they were going, and all of a sudden, the vehicle started having hiccups. They found an accident, the first pain, some of people, the people got injured. They also get, got another accident the second time. The vehicle stopped to move, the coffin was broken, fell down several times. It was not no more anymore. People said, now this person who has died, he is now not going, he has refused. He has completely refused, so please let us talk to him. Watch out. According to Ibrahim, what was to be another journey like the many others he had made ended up being a strange and scary one. Let me look at another one. There was drama in Eldoret when the body of a 25-year-old casual worker was stuck on the streets of the busy town for more than 20 hours. Now, This is a body that has stuck for more than 20 hours claimed that the deceased had refused to go home for burial. <laughs> they say the man has refused. If you are 25 years please, when you die, die in peace. Amen. No wonder we fear when a person dies, we write, please rest in peace. Don't disturb us when you die. Now, two vehicles that were to ferry the body home developed mechanical problems. And when the relatives pleaded with the cops, the journey eventually progressed. They are crying, please, let's go home. The body home developed mechanical problems. And when the relatives pleaded with the cops, the journey eventually progressed. A shocked crowd, passionate wailers, a coffin in the middle of the streets, a scene that is quite unusual. I am your last boy sister. You see, friends, who are the voices from the tombs? There are people also who believe that when somebody dies, he can also come and speak to you. Actually, we have so many cases in our country where people say he has refused, he has said we remove the body here, we take it somewhere else. And by the way, who are these people that we communicate to? I have a friend of mine in the university somewhere. He says the mother died. When the mother died, she was buried, and then they were used to eating supper late in the night to live. Your utensils dirty in the kitchen, but when they wake up in the morning, they will find all the utensils clean, washed. Now, in the morning, they would wonder, it's washed, arranged, clean. So one day, the mother appeared to them, and he told them, I am the one washing them. <laughs> Another one, in the coastal region of Kenya, the husband died, and every the husband was coming and said, give me my, give me my thing. <laughs> Those who are wives have understood. A woman in Malindi is... Now, this is interesting. Let me share with you this one more thing. The famous makeup artist, not only for the living, but mostly for the dead. Nowik passes by without her being called in various mortuaries to wash and apply makeup on the dead. Our coastal region reporter Tobias Chanji has a story. If you are a beautician, will you wash, dress, or apply makeup to dead bodies? Now, this one is another one who does business. There are people who, they are, they, they are pampered, please, when you die, don't disturb us. We will do you a good send-off. According to the Bible, friends, what does the Bible teach concerning this issue? 
In fact, there are so many things I want to I want don't want to look at. But who are these spirits of spiritualism? Who are these people who communicate? What are these suckers? What are all these things that happen on the roadside where people refuse to go to be buried? You see, friends, cults have a certain belief that it's demonic, and it has been embraced by Christians today. You see, friends, can it be dangerous? to converse with the spirits of the dead? Is it safe to start talking to your grandfather? The people tell me, you see, oh, every night I sleep, my grandfather comes to me, and my mother died, my father died. He tells me, A, B, C, D. Don't go there, don't do this. This person is planning for you that. And they, they talk to me, some of them in the dream, some of them I hear the voice. Is it safe to talk to them now? The devil's door, for me to be imprecise, it is beginning to talk with the dead. Have you ever opened that door? Some people believe that when the, the dead people can't die, they come now in form of angels. So they come. Those who come, they are angels. The, the angels are the spirit of the dead people. Angels are not spirits of the dead people. They were created before man. The Bible is very clear. For the living know they shall, that the dead know not, so do the spirits of the dead return to visit the living? That's the question I want to answer before we go home. Can somebody who has died come back to your home? Can he even realize where his home is? Does he even remember your name? Let's go to that answer slightly. Let's read the book of Job chapter 7 verse 9 and 10. The Bible says, as the cloud is consumed and vanished, away. So he that, he that goes down to the grave shall come up. No. The Bible is clear. My brother, when you die, and we make for you that six by how many feet? <laughs> yes. When we, when we put for you that grave, and then we say, and the dust shall go back to dust, and we pick that dust, and we throw it inside. <laughs> and then those men who, who want something after that, once they pile the, 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 the sand or the soil on top of you, and we cover you, and we put for you uh, flowers, and they wither. After all that is done, my brother, you go to a journey that you will never return. We are supposed to forget you completely. We even start to re remembering. How did this man look like? We even forget your color. Well, was it brown or black? You go in a place where you shall never return again. The biggest question is, who then are those people who return back to us? Let's continue slightly. The Bible is very clear. He shall return no more to his house. Then if the Bible says when a person dies, he shall never return to his house, then who are these people who come back to our houses? The biggest question. The Bible says neither shall his place know him anymore. You will not know him, neither will the compound ever remember him. He goes forever. The Bible is very clear. He shall never return again. So do the spirits of the dead return to visit their living? According to that verse, can they return? No. Listen to what Job says. Job chapter 14 verse 12. So man lies down and riseth not, my brother. When that day we will do for you this, this. Brother, you will go that way and he does this, run away. <laughs> run away! That is not a human thing. Because the Bible is very clear. You shall die, you shall lie down, and rise not till, what's the word? Till heavens shall be no more. They shall not awake, nor be raised out of their sleep. You see, friends, when you rise, the way you sleep on the bed, until morning, you rise up. 
So when a person dies and he goes six feet, he remains there until the heavens pass away and Jesus returns. And you see, friends, it's very unfortunate. The Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 10, and Revelation chapter 6, verses number 14, that the, the heavens will pass away when Jesus shall come back again. Amen? So, according to the Bible, the spirits of the dead do not return to visit the living. Listen to what the Bible says again. Job chapter 16, verse 22. When a few years are come, then I shall go the way whence I shall not return. Now, I wonder how you read these verses and you still believe that somebody dies and comes back home. I wonder how you are a Christian, you read this verse, and you still believe that the person who comes to you and speaks to you is still your father and your mother. You see, friends, the Bible is very clear. When a person dies, he does not return. For the living know they shall die, but the dead know not anything. So who comes back? The devil. Let me ask you a question. I don't know whether you, you, you people have people like these ones. In our country, we have somebody called Nyambane. It's called who? That man is a complete man who mimics the, the second president of the country who died. Daniel Toroti Charabmoy. When that man speaks, you will completely think it is a president speaking. Do you have people like that? The man is speaking. Oh, you have one in the tent. There are people who mimic the voice. There are people who even mimic how a person walks like. I remember when we were in a class in primary school, we ever mimicked teachers who were funny. Did you ever do that in class? Can a human being do, do such a thing? Yes. Do you think a devil can mimic exactly how your voice looks like? Yeah? If a human being can do that, what about a fallen angel? You see, the Bible is very clear that those are things the devil can do. He is the one who deceives people to commit suicide. He is the one who leads people to do such things. The Bible says, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. The devil can come as an angel of light when Jesus was going to be tempted. The devil came to Jesus as an angel of light. When Eve was on that tree, on that tree he wanted to partake of the fruit. He, the devil did not come as the devil. He came as the serpent. He went through the serpent. The devil has power to do anything. He can come like your grandfather. He can come like your grandmother. He can come like anything. He comes as a spirit. Because the devil is a spirit. You are not a spirit. You have flesh. You have blood. When you die, you become clay. But the devil is constantly a spirit and he can ever come as anything, as anyone, with any voice that he wants. So, friends, the devil can come in any form. And that is why, friends, I want you to go home knowing the Bible is very clear in the book of Revelation, chapter 16, verses number 14. For they are the spirits of devils working. Can you imagine any time you speak to a dead person, that's not the, de that the person speaking to, you are speaking face to face with the devil? That's why today, friends, our biggest question, have you ever opened this door? Because cults are deceived on the state of man in death. Say, friends, today, we are asking another question, what happens to a person when he dies? We realize that man is mortal, that soul is also mortal, and the soul that sinneth, it shall die. The Bible is very clear that there is only hope in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus. The Bible says that marvel not, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves. When Jesus Christ comes, everybody who is in the graves will come forth. And those some to the resurrection of life, and some to the resurrection of dam damnation. The very first lie that devil ever told on mankind was on the subject of 
death. Do you know preachers they lie to us on the subject of death? That is why you can stand in a place and the preacher says, Don't mind, he is up yonder, singing and praising the Lord, when the Bible clearly says he's in the grave. He says, there are people, do you know today, there are churches, mega churches in the world, whereby if you want to talk to your grandfather, you just go to that preacher, and he goes forth the spirits of your dead grandfather, he comes, you talk with him, and you go home. Somebody is wondering, really? Oh, yes. In church, the things that which the doctors used to do during the, the times of King Saul, they are exactly being done today because people believe that they are not truly dead. You can still communicate to them. That communication began with Eve. When he decided to start talking to that serpent, do you know whom she was talking to? But for her, she thought she's talking to all. To this happened, but she was actually talking to the devil. You see, friends, that is the very door. It was first opened by Eve, and the devil lied to her, and he told her, you shall not surely, but God said you shall surely die. Question, who was right? Who said the truth? God said you shall not surely. The serpent said, uh, God said you shall surely die. The serpent said you shall not surely die. Among the two, who said the truth? And who lied? Eh? Now, spiritualists believe that it is actually God who lied. If the soul is mortal, then the devil did not lie. But if the soul is mortal, then God told the truth. Immortality of the soul began by Egyptians, came to the Babylonians, came to the Greeks, came to Buddhism. It came to Islam, it came to Freemasonry, and today it has come to Christianity. The belief that when you die, you do not truly, truly die. Satanists believe in the pagan doctrine of the immortality of the soul. And the Christian today, they also believe the same. There is a, a, a magazine called the Reader's Digest. They say there is no death. And they say that, this one preacher who said, you don't really die at all. It may seem like death, but you really keep on living, and you know more afterwards than you did before. That is a spiritualistic mind. Spiritualism teaches people, and this is Spurgeon, who is a spiritualist. He says, spiritualism say that the dead know more than the Living and the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. Yet the Bible says that the dead know not anything. Spiritualists continues to say that in this, as in many other Bible passages, the devil told the truth and the Lord is in error. Do you join? The spiritualistic mindset that believe that the people don't truly really die, that the devil was right when he says you don't surely die, you die partially and your soul continues moving. The belief or the doctrine that the spirits of the devils communicate to the living, especially through mediums, is a demonic teaching. And you see, friends, it was ever in the new age, in astrology, in occultism, in magic, in this, in belief of reincarnation, it was in witchcraft, it, it was in spiritualism, it was in many others, including that book called the Harry Potter. That is why, friends, spiritualism is something that is to be fought by every Christian. Amen? Now, before I wind up, let me just give you a story of where this thing began. Where did people start talking to the dead? Modern spiritualism had its origin back in the mid-1800s at the Huntsville Cottage in Huntsville. There in New York, it was a house that was called a haunted house, and there was a Fox family that moved into this house, and they discovered that that house was haunted by ghosts. They would hear the ghosts walking and running in the house at night and every time, and they were knocking here and there, and the family at first was so much terrified. But they continued living in that same house, and they, as they got used to that, 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 that noise, they got used to these spirits. They put the carpets on the stairs, they put the carpets in their 
houses so that they could minimize the noise that were coming through these schools as they were going up and down. But eventually, the children in that, those houses, which were teenager girls, they began to try to communicate with these spirits. One day, when they had the ghosts, the, the ghosts knocking on the wall, Marigat, Ma, Ma, Margarita, one of the fox children, called out the ghosts. And it told those ghosts, do what I do. So she started snapping her fingers. She started making a few noises here and there and requested those ghosts to repeat. And immediately, the same, same noise began rappling and coming back to her. And it wasn't long before she started a system of communicating to the spirits. She was tapping out messages back and forth as they were speaking with these ghosts. And the very first message that these spirits brought into that haunted house summarizes the claim of spiritualism in all its forms. They say to her, we are your dead relatives and friends. You see, friends, they had opened the devil's door. And until today, that is where it began, for they are the spirits of devils working miracles. And today, we have this monument, the birthplace of modern spiritualism. Upon this site stood the Huntsville Cottage, the home of the Fox Sisters, and through whose medium, communication with the spirits world was established in the year 1848, March 31. And they say there is no death. There are no dead, placed here by so and so. In other words, this belief that the dead do not die is something that is actually from the devil, and the devil's door was thrown wide open. Today as we go home, my question is, friends, have you ever opened that door? Is it possible that you've ever taken up time and you've ever found yourself communicating with the dead? Is it possible that in your life you could have been a victim of circumstances concerning these things. You see, friends, you've just noticed today that the devil's door is simply communicating with the spirits of the dead. Please never do that. And if you've ever opened that door, you are in danger. Because one writer wrote this and said, Many will be confronted by the spirits of devils, personating beloved relatives, our friends, and declaring the most dangerous heresies. These visitors will appeal to our tenderest sympathies, and they will work miracles to sustain their pretensions. We must be prepared to withstand them with the Bible truth that the dead know not anything, and they whom thus appear are the spirits of all. Devils, ever remember, the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. Today as you go home, I want you to make an appointment with the Lord. If you've ever, ever in your life spoken to the dead, if you have problems where you have dreams of dead people coming to communicate to you constantly, they tell you this, they tell you that, they tell you this, today is the time for you to lock those doors, amen? You cannot continue that way. They torment your heart every time they want to remind you of the past pain experiences of the people who have died. God wants when somebody dies, we forget and we have hope when he comes, we shall meet with them again. But the devil wants to torture you. Today you can close that door. And you know how you close that door? Is to make a vow, a commitment to give your lives entirely to who? Jesus. When you give your life to Jesus, Jesus will be there to guard you. Jesus will be there to stand with you. And whenever such things come, I want you to withstand them with God's word. The living know they shall die, but the dead know not anything, and they will flee away. They will never disturb you. Place your faith on God's word, and you shall be saved. But if you still believe that the dead can still come to you, they will haunt you. They will follow those who believe in them. But if you stop to believe such, the Lord will stand for you with you forever and evermore. Is there somebody who is saying, I want to close that door, even if I have never opened it? Somebody says, I want to close it. Thank the Lord. Rise up together with me. I realize many people are fearful and people feel embarrassed. But today I want to give you an opportunity as we pray 
If you are a victim of circumstances, pray to the Lord. I'll be praying with you from this point, wherever you are, that we may close those doors that the enemy has ever opened. Let's believe and pray. Our dear loving master was in heaven. Yesterday and today we've taken time to look at this topic in these last days that will be a deception to many. There are many in this planet are, that have opened this door some knowingly and some without their knowledge. Some people have been struggling and suffering. For so many years they have been communicating to the spirits of the dead, to the spirits that come from the devil himself. They have been opening that door, communicating constantly to the devil. But today we have realized that the dead know not anything. We have realized that the dead shall never return to their homes. We have realized that once a person lies down, he shall never come up again until the second coming of Jesus. Today we have realized that Jesus, you are the only one who is our safeguard. You are the only one to whom we can run to and we want to pray with you, dear Lord. May you come down to our lives today. May you come down to our rescue. May you come down to the rescue of your children. There are many who are suffering. There are many who are going through trials and temptation. They are going through a lot of problems because they have opened the door of the devil. But today, through the lovely image of Jesus, today, through the lovely kindness of our master, today, through the masses and the long suffering that you forbear upon this planet earth, we want to come just as we are, seeking for power that comes from above, that can close all the doors that have been opened. And those people who are willing to close those doors, may you stand with them forever. Dear Lord, may you take care of us. May you always give us a hope of a better resurrection. May we never listen to a cult. May we never be found in a group that has left your teachings and followed human teachings. Teach us to look unto Jesus as the author and the finisher of our faith. Lord Jesus, we invite you into our lives. May you receive every soul that is giving his life to you this evening. May you accept them as part of your children. May you stand with them now and forevermore. For this is our humble prayer in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you, friends.